an official hello to everyone. Welcome to the High Speed Healing monthly call. It is truly an honor to have you here today. Uh, welcome back to those of you who have been in my universe previously and genuinely heartfelt welcome to those of you who are brand new. And I know there are quite a few new people on the call today. And I want to shake you up. I want to shake you up. I want today for you to leave here curious, questioning, maybe a little rattled because you hear something that you've either not heard before or it finally clicks. You're not going to hear the typical solution. If you are here because you've been suffering from chronic physical pain, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, if you have had trouble sleeping, if you have digestive drama, if you have different symptoms and you've been to doctors and specialists and done the tests and you've taken the prescription drugs or the natural supplements and you have not gotten the results you hoped for or gotten any results at all and you are frustrated, you're in the right place. If you have been binge eating, if you have been over drinking, over spending, over sleeping, over anything, over doing, you're in the right place. It doesn't matter if you are here because you have pain in your finances or your romances or your back. Pain is pain. And whatever way it's showing up for you, there's a reason for that. When you have patterns that keep showing up in your relationships or your career, it's painful when you feel like you can't change something for the better and you want to. If you have had some kind of physical symptoms going on and you're wondering like, when is this going to stop? How am I gonna function like this for the rest of my life? And you're starting to worry, or maybe you've been worrying, maybe you're very anxious about it because you don't know what the future holds and something's got to give. First of all, I want you to understand that I understand. I have been there, done that with all of the above. <laughs> I'm a quadruple winner, physical pain, emotional pain, depression, anxiety, over uh, eating, over alcoholing, over drugging. I did it all, honestly. And over 30 years ago now, I woke up one morning and there I was lying on the floor of my big, beautiful walk-in closet, big, beautiful house, looked like everything was, you know, it looked like a good life but I couldn't stop crying. And I was out of ideas and out of willpower. I couldn't fake it one more day and look you in the eye and smile and say, everything's great. It wasn't great. It was horrible. I was dying inside and nobody knew it. And I wasn't talking about it. And the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with you. That's the worst feeling in the world when you know something's really wrong and you're told by an expert, there's nothing wrong with you. I didn't know what to do at that point. And I, the way that I was trying to cope with life wasn't serving me. It wasn't working any longer. I was out of ideas and I couldn't stand the feeling and the hopelessness and the constant stress. I had pains in my chest. I couldn't eat, my stomach hurt so bad. It was in knots from the worry, from the pain of life. I couldn't digest life. So whatever you're struggling with, I want you to first of all, acknowledge your success. Now, what is, what is she talking about? <laughs> success, right? First of all, you're here. You didn't give up. Something brought you to this call. Some part of you is seeking and not giving up. 
And you want to keep listening to that part. You've got a voice, even if it's a dim, very quiet voice, but there's a part of you that says, it's not supposed to be like this. I've got to figure it out, right? How many of you have said, I've got to figure it out? Anybody? Yeah. And you want to acknowledge yourself for the determination that you have. You have determination. And on some level, you've made a decision that you're not giving up and you're going to take the next step, even if you don't understand what's happening or where you're going. And so I acknowledge you for that and for showing up and taking time out of your life to come here. And today we're going to talk about a different way, a completely new window of to look out a new window with a new understanding of what is going on with you that is not what you're going to hear about on television typically, or um, it, it's not what you're hearing in the news. But if you're brand new here and you have not ever looked at the my website on the success story page, the testimonial page, you need to check that out because it will give you hope. It will inspire you when you see what has happened for the people I've worked with all over the world. I've been privileged to work with people now in over 160 countries. It's mind blowing because I went from lying on my closet floor every half an hour taking some kind of pill or drink to get through the day. And that went on for years, not just a few days or weeks, for years, okay? I have no reason to be here, but I am here. And I learned from my experiences and it became the catalyst for all the work that I do today. And I've been able now to help tens of thousands of people all around the world. And I have to tell you, it's been the most rewarding, exciting journey and I wanna help you. So what I will ask of you today is number one, to just be, open-minded to perhaps a new way of thinking and looking at what's going on with you. And number two, no, don't condemn me. Don't shoot the messenger before you've tried things out. Contempt prior to investigation will be a, your downfall. And so I don't want you to stop short. And I know because I used to do that. I was a know-it-all. I had all the answers. And if you told me this or that, oh, I've already done that. I already know that. I already, I, I, that's not going to work for me. And that know it all itis kept me for a long time in a lot of pain. And so I know a lot of you have been working on yourselves for a long time. I know. I read the emails, I speak to my clients and my groups every day. And almost everyone who shows up in my universe tells me, Deborah, I can't figure this out. I have been working on myself for years. What is wrong with me? Why am I different? Why am I stuck? Why am I blocked? So the first thing I want you to write down tonight or today, wherever you are, is I am not blocked. Write it down. I am not blocked. I'll explain that. But you are not blocked. I know that's a very popular way of thinking. It doesn't fly here. What you have is a blind spot. You're not blocked. You have something hidden from your view, so you're looking desperately, but you're not seeing. And it's easier to see other people than yourself. And most people who have a long relationship with pain. And when I say pain, just fill in the blank with your version of pain. Most people who have a long relationship or a short relationship with pain, they start to figure it out and think about it with the limited understanding that they have. They've All of you have gathered different information from different people that you either trusted or you doctor Googled or you, you've talked to that had something similar. And you've got ideas 
about what's going on with you, right? And you keep thinking about it and thinking about it and looking back in your experience to see, well, how did I get this way? Is anybody doing this? How did this happen? How did I get this way? And you're trying to figure it out with a very limited understanding. Those thoughts are not always accurate. And from just for today, even just for this hour or however long we're together today, I want you to recognize that you can't believe everything you think is true. You cannot believe every thought that goes through your head. It's not necessarily true. Even if you heard it from an expert, there are a lot of false beliefs that I find everyone I work with believes to be true. And your beliefs have tremendous power in affecting your physical body and your life, your health and how you feel, your emotional health, your mental health is affected, number one, by how you think. So the ideas that you're thinking all day long have a huge impact on every choice you make, every feeling, every emotion that you have, and every physical symptom. Your thoughts and your emotions are the precursor to the physical symptoms. Your body doesn't just make stuff up and decide on its own. Thoughts and emotions, which are invisible energy, you can't see them, right? They start first before anything shows up physically. You are so much more powerful than you may realize. You are a creative being. We are constantly creating with our thoughts and then we give it real juice with our emotions. So the things you're thinking about all day long over and over, including the worries, the fears, you're creating with those ideas and they generate an emotional response and emotions are like gas in a car and it gives it more power for that car to run in the wrong direction. The thoughts that you repeat that are based on fear coupled with the emotions, worry, overwhelm, fear, anxiety, they make your car run in the wrong direction. But what, we, what happens is, is we live in a world where the body has a symptom or your relationships have a symptom and you go talk to somebody that you think is going to help you and they start talking about the symptoms. And the common way of thinking, especially if we're talking about physical health, is to drug out or cut out the symptom, try to get it to, to shut up, to stop. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's wrong with that? I, I don't want to live in pain. I've got to get this, rid of this symptom or I can't function, right? Well, what if? Now, here's why I'm asking you to open both ears wide. What if the symptoms had a message for you that's actually the most important information that you need in order to be able to dissolve the symptom naturally? without trying to cut it out or drug it out. Now, don't get me wrong, please, because somebody will probably say, well, but I need to take these drugs. I am not here to give you medical advice. I'm not telling you to stop any medications that you've been told to take. That, when I work with people, almost all of them are on some kind of medication just to be able to get through the day. That, when I work with people, that changes, not because I tell them to, I'm not a doctor and I'm not here to, to be your doctor. I'm here to give you a completely new understanding of how health and healing works.
And when you follow that understanding and you participate in what I teach and in the energy healing that I provide in the energy field, and we'll talk about that in a minute, you have the most fast, safe, profound way of regaining your health, of feeling your energy come back, and of tapping into the joy and the ease and the happiness that you're searching for without drugs or supplements or giving up all the foods you love, without restricting your diet, and those people who are on medications find in most cases they they get off and that they can live a healthy happy life without constant medication so but i'm not here to tell talk about that or to even ask you to do anything like that that will come in the right time for you and you and your healthcare practitioner will make that decision you'll know you'll know They'll either stop working or you'll forget to take them or they will no longer be needed and the test will show it. So you don't have to figure it all out right now. What you have to do is be open to understanding that you and everyone here and everyone out there and myself included, we are energy beings. Energy, vibration, and frequency are the key, the new keys, the misunderstood keys, the most unfamiliar keys to all health. And I don't, it doesn't matter if we're talking about the body or your money situation or your relationships. It's all about energy, vibration, and frequency. So what do I mean by that? If you could look at your body under a high-powered piece of equipment, you would discover you're not physical. <laughs> yes, she said that. You're not physical. Your body is a mass of vibrating particles of energy and light. And it's vibrating at a particular vibrational frequency. Now, what does that mean? Well, here's an example of what it means. If you have cable TV and you take your remote and you click on channel 12, you will see a movie or a TV show on channel 12. But if you click channel 10 or channel 8 or channel 22, you're shifting the frequency of the channel. These channels are on different vibrational frequencies, very slight differences. But when you change the channel, you get a completely different show a completely different experience and you can click from a horror story to a romance in one little click of changing the frequency what this has to do with you is that your body is carrying a predominant vibrational frequency and this is why you hold a pattern of pain or symptoms you're holding a pattern based on the frequencies and these frequencies are influenced by thoughts and emotions and yes food and yes frequencies that come off of electronic devices yes the atmosphere if you're in a room filled with poisonous gas you're going to be affected by that that everything has a vibrational frequency that affects you but the most important ones are ones we're not typically talking about. And those are your thoughts and your emotions. Every emotion and every thought emits a vibrational frequency that has the power to either change the channel or keep you on the same channel. Now I'm about to make a very bold statement that some of you, I would venture to guess, never heard before, but your memories that you think about again and again from the past or the stories you tell yourself that haven't happened yet in the future they hold they form your body and they keep you in the pattern that you're in 
So until you change the channel on the stories from the past and the future stories that you keep telling yourself, you are participating in the very problem you're trying to get rid of and you don't know it. And this is why I happen to know that you're not stuck or blocked. You're using your mind in the wrong way. No one taught you how to ask the right questions and go deep enough into the mind and how the a mind, the thoughts connect to the emotions. The emotions drive your choices. Your choices become your habits and your habits create patterns and your patterns make up your body and your life, your physical life. And if none of these things change, then nothing will change. Now you might be thinking, I hear some of you thinking, yeah, but I've tried this technique and that and acupuncture and chiropractic and I meditate and I work out. I like I've tried things. How come nothing changed? Right? Because there's something that you have not acknowledged yet that that's deeper than you may want to go. So for example, I worked with someone yesterday who has been through a lot of trauma in her life. I mean, serious, devastating, horrible trauma in her life, repeatedly. Abuse, violence, um, surgeries that went bad, just a, a, a pretty horrific story, okay, that's very real and she experienced and she survived it somehow. And so we've been working on releasing the charge, the emotional charge. See, every experience we go through, we feel it. We feel the good ones, the happy ones, the ones you like to remember, but there are those you do not ever want to remember. Or you remember them, but you certainly don't want to spend any time digging around in there again because it was traumatic or it was an accident or an injury perhaps. And the body holds on to the emotional charge from these experiences. So, so in our conversation, I was helping her access and release some very traumatic memories that she, and she said, you know, I can feel it in me where I don't want to go there. And if you're honest with yourself right now, and you learn to go inward instead of outward and looking for your answers out there if you start to go inward you'll discover there are things you don't want to feel don't want to think about and don't want to bring up does anybody ever can anybody own that does any anybody had that experience where you got so far with something and then a part of you just went no i i, I can't go there and it usually is linked Thank you for the thumbs up, everybody. It's linked to not feeling safe. And when we don't feel safe, your nervous system, your brain is wired to keep you alive, not to keep you comfortable, but it's wired to keep you alive, which means it will go red alert, danger, there's danger. And so what that does is it keeps you on red alert so that the perceived danger doesn't kill you. But what does that look like? Well, that looks like the minute you start to fall asleep, a part of you wakes up and won't let you fully sleep or relax. It looks like when you're with people, certain people, and you and they're either they look angry or they are angry. Maybe they're arguing. Maybe they're even yelling. Your gut clenches up. You stop breathing your whole body goes into red alert. You don't relax. You don't digest. Your brain doesn't get the oxygen because you start holding your breath and you may or may not even be aware of this. When you don't feel safe, you're holding your breath. You're not breathing deeply. Most people start breathing very shallow in the upper chest only. <gasps> when you're scared, what's the first thing you do? <gasps> you hold your breath. You cannot be healthy and calm if you're holding your breath or breathing really shallow. So you are a body, mind, emotional complex that's all fits together. You're not separate parts. 
And if you've been through experiences at any time in your life, but particularly growing up before the age of eight or nine, if you had experience, experiences where there was violence or um, there was abuse or there was where you didn't feel safe, something happened where you didn't feel safe, or you had accidents or injuries at some point in your life, or you were told you aren't good enough and you started stressing out mentally, worrying if you were gonna be good enough in school or if you were going to be able to handle the job or taking care of your family. I had an eight-year-old once, a mother brought to me, who had migraine headaches and they couldn't figure anything out. There was nothing showing up on a test. And this little boy, um, as I started having a conversation with him and asking him questions, you know what I found? He was worried about getting into college. He was eight. Eight-year-olds should be swinging on swings and digging in the dirt. He was worried about getting into college because his teachers were preparing him for college at eight. This eight-year-old was so wrapped up in knots and stress and tension from the pressure about college at that young age. He had daily migraines and they were ready to prescribe heavy duty drugs at eight. So we had a conversation. I worked in his energy field. He released the fears. The parents started to help calm him down and reassure him. And this little boy was able to get his energy and his happiness back and break that habit of worry and stress and pressure very early on. How many of you have broken that habit? I work with people 60s, 70s, 80s, and their six-year-old, their eight-year-old is running their life. I find it a lot. The eight-year-old is running an 80-year-old's life because we haven't been taught anywhere in our education to examine our, our thoughts and to find and release the emotions. We try to hide the emotions because we're taught, well, that's immature or unprofessional, or you look like a weakling, or you're a sissy, or you're going to look silly. So we shove those deep down, and they're the most powerful energy that you have, our emotions. And they're affecting you. And if you're shoving them down and suppressing, repressing, denying, or numbing them out like I did with drugs or alcohol or a pint of ice cream, what will happen is eventually you'll you'll lose touch with them and you'll, you won't be aware of your emotions. Then there that's like having the um, horse you get in a, on a horse and just let the horse take you wherever the horse wants to go. You don't even feel in control of your own destiny. So we have to take the reins back and start to approach this in a new way and ask some deeper, different questions. There are quite a few things, actually 13 top reasons I've discovered uh, in the years of working with people that lie at the root of all pain and suffering and symptoms. And they're not what you think. So today I wanna to ask you a very important question. How many of you feel 100% that you have resolved, made peace with, Emotional upsets in your life. By that, I mean anger, fear, grief, shame. How many of you feel 100% comfortable and peaceful about all the experiences you've had in your life and you have no more anger, you don't, act, you don't have fears running your life, you're not ashamed of anything about yourself. You love everything about yourself, your life. Are any hands going up? Unresolved emotions are probably the strongest number one reason that people are ill or in pain because 
you're either in ease or dis-ease. So if you haven't resolved and released emotional energy, you're not going to feel ease. You're going to feel dis-ease and your body will give you the feedback but it will often show up as a symptom that gets misinterpreted. So Galen is saying guilt is number one for him, for her. And so if you know you've got guilt going on, and by the way, almost everybody I talk to tells me they feel guilty about something or a lot of people or situations or their family or a friend or something that they didn't live up to their own expectations and they, or they're not doing something, they feel guilty about it. This eats away at you, literally eats away at you. Did you know that emotions can disrupt your hormones and your hormones affect your sleep, your weight, your digestion, your elimination, everything, your energy? So many people come to me because they say, no matter what I do, I can't lose weight. Why can't I lose weight? I exercise, I eat well, because it's not about your weight. It's more about probably your guilt or self-judgment or protection because you're scared and you don't feel safe. Are you starting to grasp what's happening here? You're starting to follow this new understanding. Type yes in the chat or raise your hand if, if uh, actually, you know what? Everybody unmute for a minute and give me a yes if you're following and this is registering and making sense. Just let's, un let's unmute and say yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. So you see, not what you're being asked typically to look at. And in fact, most practitioners really don't have a lot of training in what, what do we even do with these emotions? <laughs> they don't really want to feel it or look at it or talk about them. We just want to calm them down in the fastest way possible. And that usually means suppress them, which will never underline bold capital letters. It will never help you get to the root of what you're suffering from. If you medicate, mask, suppress, repress the symptom, you're, you won't heal the root. And write this down, please. The root of whatever you're suffering from is, I'm sorry, the symptoms that you're suffering from are never the root of the problem. The symptoms of what you're suffering from are never the root of the problem. So that creates a dilemma because the whole common way out there of dealing with symptoms is to get try to suppress the symptom, which will never deal with the root of the problem. So do you see why you go round and round a revolving door that you can't get out of into the building? You can't get out onto the street or into the building. You just go round and round the revolving door and you feel stuck and you want somebody to like help you get out of there, but you don't know how. So what brought you here today? Please type in the chat a word or two or a sentence of what brought you here today? What have you been struggling with? What type of pain has shown up in your body, mind, spirit, life? Anybody willing to share? Please type in the chat. The chat is at the bottom in the toolbar. All right, thank you. So unresolved trauma, digestive issues, neck pain. Who else? Three people. There's a lot of people on the call. What about the rest of you? Sadness, lack of energy, MS, 13 years of chronic back pain, neck pain, digestive issues, grief, shame, chronic migraines, chronic pain, lack of energy, left side pain, boredom, frustration, digestion, yes. Nervousness and vibrating, digestive issues, breast cancer, digestive issues. There's some quite a, a bit of overlap here today. So 
I want to ask you all an important question to start to ponder, get curious about. I want you to look back in your life about two years, one to two years before your symptoms showed up. And I want to ask you if you had any kind of very stressful experience or a series of maybe even smaller stresses, but a, a series of stress. By stress, I mean things like you lost a job, you lost a friend, you had a death in the family, you moved, you um, you lost a lot of money. You went through a financial crisis. You um, had an accident or an injury. You had somebody very close to you going through something really heavy that you were feeling and you didn't know how to help them. A friend, a child. You may have had... Um, some type of abuse. Look at what happened in your life. If I was, if you were to take me back into your life a year or two before, what types of stress was going on in your life? And it could have been longer. It could have been further than two years. But oftentimes what happens is, is that if you have a one to two year period where you are feeling fear, guilt, shame, not safe, et cetera, et cetera, for repeatedly, or you had one big shocking event, the emotions that were not resolved gets held inside. Now, remember, emotions are energy in motion. That's what emotions are supposed to be. When they don't move, some people blast them out at other people and some people hold them in or try to medicate them and suppress them and uh, subdue them so that they can function and not, they never deal with them. Those, the emotion from those stressors will come out sideways as a symptom if they're held in long enough. And what's odd is the symptoms don't typically make sense to people. They start looking at what? The first thing, what, what did I eat? That's the first thing most people do when they have a symptom. What did I eat that's affecting me? Um, so... I want you to look at this from a different angle. And I want you to look at what kind of stress and, and make a list. And did you know that positive stress is stress? And that some of the greatest things you've ever wanted to do that you did, for example, maybe you moved into a new home. Maybe you moved out of the country. Maybe you moved to a new state. Maybe you got married. Maybe you went graduated college. Maybe you went to college. Maybe you um, finally bought a home or a car. Maybe you got the job that you've always wanted. These are awesome things, but guess what? They're off their high stressors because they disrupt and cause a lot of change. And they kick in to needing to sometimes readjust everything in your life. So you've wanted to get married your whole life. You get married, but it involves a lot of change. And even though it's positive, it's stressful. So you may have a list of all positive stressors, but it is stressors, it's enough stress that it can push you over the edge. So I'm, let me look at the chat because there's a lot of um, comments coming in. So let's see here. Yeah. Um, whether you had a spouse who got a, a diagnosis, whether you got a diagnosis, whether you were in the hospital visiting a friend, um, 
you know, Tanya's saying, I, I don't think I have had a period of two years without some type of stress, intense family stress, as far back as I can remember. See, these are the kinds of things I find. You see, my friends, you have to recognize you're not a machine and you have to be able to take care of yourself. And when life throws curveballs, many people take themselves off the list. Some people weren't on the list to begin with for self-care and they start responding to what's going on around them, to the people who need them, to the crisis. They, they go to put out the fire. And if you do that long enough, you will suffer. And so part of healing, if not one of the most important parts of, of being able to learn how to live pain-free is self-care. But guess what I find? When people become afraid and stressed, the self-care gets worse. They start to eat more junk food because they're tired. So they eat more sugar or sodas or quick meals that they can just grab because they don't have time to cook anymore. They look for quick energy. They might um, drink a lot of those energy drinks or more caffeine. Um, when people are really stressed and have other people they have to take care of, their sleep goes down the tubes. They don't often get en enough sleep. They, um, many people I find try to power through these experiences so they overwork and they distract themselves on social media and other you know watching tv or the news or whatever for hours because they're trying to distract themselves from their emotions they're trying to get some kind of relief in a way that actually becomes more harmful than good anybody relate to this so you see we've got to recognize that self-care is one of the biggest keys if you ever want to heal you're going to have to recognize you cannot go to school all day work all night care for your kids take care of your family do your hobbies and and over exercise to try to lose weight from the junk food like you can't you're going to have to recognize that you matter and that if you're ever going to be there for anyone else you've got to fill your own cup that giving is not better than receiving and that people pleasing is not the solution either. Sometimes you have to learn to say no and not be available. And that's the toughest one I find for most people is learning to say no, especially if it's someone you care about deeply, that you can't always be there for everyone. This is a tough one, especially if it's family or someone you love. So if you want to learn to heal, please write this down. You must learn to feel. If you want to heal, you must learn to feel. If you want to feel, you must listen to the feedback from your body. Your body is always telling you how you feel if you listen to it. Your body is a feedback machine. And yet what happens is, is instead of listening to the feedback, we, we interpret the feedback and give it meaning that keeps us from the message that it's trying to give us. So, for example, if I'm really upset at my spouse, but I'm afraid to speak up and say I'm angry because I'm afraid I'll lose him or I'm afraid he'll get more upset with me. And I just and I learned as a child just to be nice and smile and not make waves. And I've had that habit running for years. So I don't say anything. That energy goes somewhere. And then I notice I'm not digesting food very well. And so I go get tested for food allergies. Do you see what happens? 
And then I'm given enzymes or this or that, and then they don't work. And I wonder what's wrong. Why am I not? And then I go get another test and another test. And before you know it, I've been down a two-year rabbit hole for looking at the wrong thing and never addressing the frustration, the anger, the hurt, the emotional pain, which could be dealt with in about an hour and learn to release. So I want you today, if there's nothing else that you hear me say, I want you to know and to remember that your body is a loving feedback machine. It's trying to help you. It's not your enemy. It's giving you clues 24 seven about when you're in ease or dis-ease. Nature follows a course that's in its DNA. If you follow your DNA, your blueprint, you'll stay more in flowing ease. But if you override your natural state and talk yourself into doing what you think is right or what you should do or what they told you to do or what you are afraid you have to do, you will probably find yourself more in disease most of the time because you've gone against your own nature. Your answers really are within you you know what upsets you, you know what bothers you, you know what would feel good for you, you know what would bring you peace, you know what would bring you joy, but are you following that guidance? I find most people get stuck because they think they should be doing something and that they don't want to do. So they force themselves, everything from eating what they don't like, to living with someone they don't like, to working at a job they don't like. They become in a habit of denying how they really feel and overriding it with some intellectual idea, a belief they picked up from somebody else usually, or that they got from the outside world. And they go against their nature. You are part of nature. Nature always easily, look at nature. It follows its path. Every animal, dogs become dogs. <laughs> they don't sit around wishing they were cats. Only humans do this type of thing. I wish I were different. I wish I looked different or sounded different or felt different. I wish I was more like that person. You, you are nature is your nature. You're exactly the way you're supposed to be. And your feelings matter, your thoughts matter. And if you're not sharing them with someone you trust, they will bottle up inside if you don't know how to release them. Now, talking is one solution. It's not the only solution. The fastest, safest way is to work with the energy field because this way it doesn't take 10 years of talking like I practiced for a long time and I would go and I spent, I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars talking about something, but it didn't fully relieve what I need. You know, I didn't get the solution till I learned to release the emotional energy and change my thinking. So I would go and I would talk and the therapist would listen, but I didn't change my thinking. So I would keep thinking the same thoughts and talking the same talk and feeling the same feelings and wonder why I'm not getting any better or feeling any better. If you're doing that, it doesn't work. You must participate in your own recovery. But the fastest way to bring up and release even the things that you don't know are bothering you or that may be really old or that you might not remember um, you know, when there's really severe trauma, the brain is designed to step away and um, can literally make you forget something. That's how you survive it. But years later, decades later, you may have a sense that something happened or something's wrong. And that could be that buried trauma that we want to be able to get to and release in a safe way that helps you recover and literally take the charge off of it. 
that's the beauty of energy healing. Your energy field <clears throat> is like a recording device. It's not like one, it is one. It's recorded everything that's ever happened to you. This is the good news because I can scan the energy field and feel where the disturbances are that might take you 10 years to figure out with your mind, or you might never find it because you can't remember. That doesn't mean you're stuck and you can't heal. Everything that's ever happened to you is a vibrational imprint in your energy field. <clears throat> and it's not that difficult. In fact, it's actually pretty enjoyable. Most people find it relaxing and more rapid than anything else. So when I work on you, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group, <clears throat> sorry, I've been talking a lot today. <clears throat> whether I'm working on you one-on-one -on -one or in a group, think of it like tuning up a guitar. A guitar always plays music, but sometimes it gets out of tune. So the music starts not sounding pretty. Well, your instrument is the same based on all of the imprints that you've been gathering. And we need to tune it up. We need to harmonize the vibrational music that's in your field because your field talks to your body. Your field is having a communication 24 seven with the cells of your physical body. And what's in the field is where it starts and it shows up last in the body. I can even help people find things that haven't shown up yet because they're in your field. So if you're an athlete, wouldn't you want to know that there's an injury on the way that you don't know about yet and you can release it before it even shows up? That's when it's exciting. Wouldn't you want to know that there's some form of disease that's got an imprint but it hasn't shown up on a test yet that I can find it in your field? To me, this is the most exciting thing on planet Earth. And this is the future of all medicine. It's about energy, vibration, and frequency. And there are more and more devices, technologies coming out, but they're expensive. They're not available everywhere and not everybody has access. Energy healing that I provide can be done anywhere at a distance. You don't need to go somewhere. You get to be in the comfort of your own home. It's all based on physics. And we know from actual science, it's not just some thing I made up. There's science that tells us we live in a gigantic field of energy and information and we're all connected to each other. So I can connect to you no matter where you are, anywhere in the world. This is the exciting future of healthcare. And so when you care enough about your health, this, in my humble opinion, should be the first step, not the last step. It's still the last step for a lot of people because it's unfamiliar to a lot of people. And there's no drugs to sell. There's no pills to sell or to take. You literally find the body responding to vibration, just like tuning a guitar. All of a sudden, the music sounds beautiful again because we harmonized the vibration. You are no different. And it's a two-way street. It does require your participation afterwards because this is the one thing I've found over the years is that I saw and still see every day people having very dramatic healing experiences. For example, someone with fibromyalgia, 30 years of pain, deep, physical, undeniable pain, and no pills and no patches and no injections, nothing helped them. And I've had thousands of people who were told they had fibromyalgia or arthritis or some type of chronic pain. And I've watched again and again in less than one hour, sometimes in a half an hour, the person look at me and go, Deborah, I'm completely pain-free for the first time in 20, 30 years. I mean, I see why people think it's a miracle. It, it seems like it, but here's the thing. If they don't change their habits of thought, and if they keep hiding out 
without feeling emotional energy and letting it move, they'll bring it all back. If they keep people pleasing or saying yes when they mean no, if they keep over giving, overdoing, and they don't listen to the feedback from their body, they will bring back. Do you see how this works? Are we getting it? Yes? No? What questions do you have? Please start firing questions in the chat for me. All right, Jean is saying, I understand exactly what you're saying, but it's difficult to get the right people who care and will listen to you when you have those, when you release those feelings. Well, yes, you can't just go to anybody and expect them. You have to go where somebody's trained to be a good listener, or you have to ask someone if they're willing and able. Not everyone's able to be a great listener, nor do they want to, nor do they have to. You have to be selective about who you go to and who you um, allow to become part of your healing journey. So it's not like you just pick anyone. Um, let's see. Nancy's saying, asking, if I find an event that created a lot of unnecessary shame, what do I do with that? Do I feel the feeling and forgive myself for carrying this feeling for so long? So shame is interesting because the quickest way to release shame, other than work, me working in your energy field, the quickest way to release shame and keep it from coming back is to share it with someone you trust. When you tell someone what you feel ashamed about, now, believe me, you can't just pick anybody and tell them. You have to pick someone that you trust, who won't judge you, who does not need to give you advice. They're not necessarily your therapist, but someone that you trust, and you tell them up front, I, I need you to listen and not judge me, and I don't really even need feedback, but I want to share something that's really been troubling me. And you share what you're ashamed about and that you've been carrying, you're going to feel relief immediately. And if you start to cultivate the habit of sharing, see, there's an old, there's a saying, some of you may have heard this, we're only as sick and shameful as the secrets we keep. Secrets cause shame. Secrets cause shame shame. So try sharing instead of secreting. I just made that word up. That's not a word. All right. Um, let's see what else. Um, okay. I'm so glad, Rosemary, that you understand, you're getting what I'm saying. And, you know, things like mold and Lyme disease and other labels, remember all these labels are only helpful if you do not start to believe in the label. And I want to address this because I suspect quite a lot of you are, are caught in this lovely trap. Do you believe in health and in disease. See, what I find is when people are given a label, I'll take Lyme disease, for example, because it's a very common one that I see where people who, who have been given that label of having those symptoms, they're very bright. They start researching. They start reading a lot about Lyme disease and they start believing in Lyme disease. And what happens is, is you start to have a belief in two powers. And this is the ultimate root of all disease is belief in two powers. You either believe in health or you believe in sickness. And sad but true, we live in a world that tends to believe in sickness because this is why we start the war on XYZ disease. If you understood that healing is natural when you're in the right place where you feel safe and you've got tools and the environment's healing and the people are loving and your mind gets right and straightened out. There's no need to have a war on a disease. 
Why do we create wars? Because we wanna overpower something that we've given power to, that we believe has power over us. This is what war is about. We've got to have greater power over people, a country, a disease, because they have power over us. This comes from a fear-based belief in two powers. And I could talk for a month about that. So I want to plant that seed tonight because it shows up a lot with the people I work with. And you need to start asking yourself that question. Where is my power? Where is my power? Have I given it away? To a person, a place, an idea, a belief, a doctor, a, 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 um, an, exp a, an explanation, a blog post, for God's sake? People give their power away to a blog post and YouTubes every day. The power to hear, heal is a God-given power. You were born with it. It's, it can't be taken away. It's a natural gift to you just for being born. I want you to hear me. Remember this. The power to heal is a natural, inalienable gift. can't be taken away. It's part of how you're made. It's part of how you were created. When you cut yourself, do you have to, like, make it happen that it heals think about that are you watching it all day to make sure it's healing you know it's going to heal but we don't have that same belief for other things that we have made into magnificent huge mountainous scary labels all right, let's see. What else are you asking me in the chat? <clears throat> so tinnitus always comes up quite a lot for people. And there are a lot of different interpretations of what it is. I don't, um, I don't go down the rabbit hole of um, the label at all. Tinnitus is a pattern that, has show, that shows up is ringing in the ears typically. And absolutely everything can change. Why? Because your body's made of energy. The sound of tinnitus that you're calling tinnitus is made of energy. It's a pattern and it's there for a reason. And even if you don't know why, it can still change. That's the most exciting news on planet Earth. And the real beauty is you may not need to know why. The better question to ask yourself is, are you willing to heal? Are you completely open to healing? Because what I find again and again is that certain symptoms are doing something for you. And again, that could be an entire class. Well, it is an entire class, but every symptom you have is doing something for you that you may not be aware of. So for example, when I was growing up, I was taught not to say no. I watched my parents not say no. They said yes to everybody. They were on call 24 seven. They, they didn't know how to say no. And I pretty much followed that family tradition, which at some point in your life is gonna be very inconvenient and very troublesome and cause some kind of problem or pain. And so, but I learned something along the way of the road of life, which is if you're sick or if you're in a lot of pain and you say to somebody, you know, I can't do that because I'm in a lot of pain. They say, oh, honey, I understand. Of course. So if you're following me, I started to unknowingly use pain and symptoms as a way to get out of things I didn't want to do because I didn't know how to say no. I don't want to do that. No, that's not for me. Thank you so much. I'll pass. Or just no is a complete sentence. I didn't know that. I wasn't taught that. And I, I was terrified of saying no. So my pain served me for quite a while. 
but it was a negative form of serving me. You know, you don't have to use your body to with pain and symptoms in order to learn to get on the track that's right for you. And yes, sometimes people will leave or they won't approve or they'll have feelings about your choices. Allow them the dignity to have those feelings and allow yourself to have the dignity to have your own as well. So there are many reasons that symptoms show up and Paul, I'm so glad that you're, you're appreciating this and that you're hearing some things that are resonating. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, there are lots of things somebody's asking, well, what do I do if I have limited resources? Well, the first thing you need to recognize is you're not limited, but you have, like so many people, you feel limited or you think you're limited. The fact is we all live in an unlimited universe. There's unlimited ways that you could receive what you need if you knew how to receive. When someone tells me they have limited resources, what I know for a fact, because I've been there myself many times, and I've helped many, many people through that issue, is you have an issue with feminine energy and receiving. And or masculine energy and doing and making things happen so that then you can receive. <laughs> Typically, it's usually more on the receiving side than the um, masculine energy side, but everything is energy, everything, including limited resources, which is a false idea that I would recommend you never say that word again today. You start to say, until now, I had limited resources. Any limitation that you believe you have, start saying until now in front of it. Because you, your language, the words you use, the words you speak, guess what they are? They're vibration. And they're sending out the signal to the universe for what you want. So if you say, well, I have limited resources, you send the instructions out to the universe to bring you the limited resources that you just spoke out into form. The thoughts come first, and then we speak. You, again, I'm gonna say what I said earlier, you're a very powerful being and no one taught you this. The words you speak, they're like neon signs and they put energy into whatever you're speaking. So most people I work with, I find that they're thinking about and speaking about what they don't want. And what you think about and speak about, you get more of. So they're getting more of what they don't want. Are you with me? This is a very powerful thing to understand. So if you think you have limited resources, number one, I'd like for you today to drop that like a hot potato and never pick it up again and start to recognize that you must believe something before you see it. You have to believe it before you see it. The invisible realm of energy comes before the physical. It comes invisible first, then it shows up in the body. It comes invisible energy first before it shows up in the bank account. So start thinking about, feeling about, imagining, dreaming, feel in your body what it feels like to have more than enough of resources. That's the proper way to use your imagination, which by the way, Einstein taught us is more powerful than knowledge. Your imagination is the greatest resource you have and your imagination is unlimited unless you're not willing to use it. You have an unlimited imagination. And the more time and energy you spend imagining what you do want and what feels incredible to you, the sooner it will show up. Now, I'd like to ask all of you, if you haven't done so yet, to download this resource. 
a copy of my book, Why Do I Still Hurt? It was written for those of you who have been struggling and trying to figure this out. It's more like a workbook. It will start to bring up some of your unconscious beliefs. It will give you questions that you need to ask yourself. And what I recommend when you go through the book is you write down your answers, your thoughts, your feelings. You must write them down, not just think about them. Because when you write down, not type on a keyboard, when you write with a pen or pencil, you're going to stimulate parts of your brain that you will not stimulate if you're just thinking about it, talking about it, or writing, or typing. So you want to get fully involved. And the other thing writing does is it slows you down, which nobody likes to do anymore. But when you slow down, more will be revealed that's in there that you never slow down enough to allow it to come up. So before you leave here today, I would like for you to remember that every day for at least three to five minutes, you can find three to five minutes. I want you to go by yourself alone and sit down and listen to yourself. Write down the predominant thoughts that are coming up that are bothering you. Write down the emotions that you're feeling. Feel your feelings. If you don't know what to do with them, reach out and let me help you. There's a very affordable call I have every month or three weeks of every month and a healing session once a month in the High Speed Healing Universe. I'll, I'll put the link to that in the, um, in the chat. You see, there's something for everyone if you're willing to move forward. It, if you go to internationalcpi.com forward slash HSHU, you will find the my membership program where I teach three weeks out of the month and take Q&A and work with people live on the call and do a healing, a high-speed energy healing session once a month. And if you're new to this and you're not really sure, this is where you, you check it out and you find out if it's for you or not. And if you know you need to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, then please go to the website and just reach out. And I still work with people one-on-one. -on -one. And if you really want the advanced tools, you go to internationalcpi.com forward slash PFLP. That's the pain-free living program. That's my advanced toolkit that shows you exactly how to clear beliefs, release emotions, and help you go much deeper into finding out what the heck is at the root. So if you go to that link I just put in the chat, internationalcpi.com forward slash PFLP, you will find a way to invest in that program at half off when you join the live group calls that I was just talking about. So when you do those two together, you have the power toolkit. You'll have the tools and the live calls and me to help you through if you feel stuck. That's what I'm here for. It is my greatest mission and purpose in life to help you. I can't do everything in one hour, even though I want to, <laughs> but you can heal and you, you need to learn some tools that you start to practice and you need to experience the energy healing it's it's quite remarkable so whatever you do today don't give up hope don't stop if you don't resonate with me i'm not insulted find who you resonate with just don't stop because the next step could be the one that just everything where everything opens up for you I hope today that you start to think about what's going on with you differently and that you don't get lost like so many people in why do I have this? That is the wrong question. Read my book, Why Do I Still Hurt? Go deeper into a much deeper uh, question. And I'll, I'll start with one tonight to leave you with. What do you believe is possible for you? What do you believe is possible for you? 
that is a much higher vibrational question than why do I have this? I've been working on myself for 20 years. Feel the energetic difference when you even just think about the two different questions. Close your eyes for a minute while I ask you this question. Why do you hurt? Why haven't you healed? You've been trying so many things. Why haven't you gotten the answer? Now just feel how that feels. Now feel this. It's possible for me to heal. It's possible for me to change. If one other human being has found relief from what I'm experiencing, then I can too. It's possible for me. Feel the difference. When I ask you, what is possible for you? What's possible for you? Are you limiting yourself by what you think is possible? And if so, expand the possibilities. If you can't do that, please reach out and let me help you do that. So, Paul, thank you so much. Paul said that's a remarkable difference and that resonates with him. And I'm just so glad that it's landing and that you're getting it and the seeds are sprouting and that you recognize that it's often just a slight change of that remote control to the next frequency, to the next channel, to get a whole different experience. And it's not that it's hard. It's that we get focused in out, looking out one particular window for too long. And so, again, another suggestion. This is pretty interesting how this works. If you have a habit of sitting in the same chair, in the same room, at night, let's say, before you, you know, after work or what, at the end of your day, if you have a habit, where you go and think about things, about what's wrong with you or how, what are you going to do next or how you're going to solve this. I want you to either change the furniture in the room or sit in a different room or in a different chair or on the couch or change it up. And I also want you to look out a different window. And just that habit break, interrupting that habit, you might find something new pops into your mind. Something new starts happening in your body. I'd like for you, as much as you're willing, to start interrupting your habit patterns throughout the day because that's what's keeping everything in the form that you're currently in. So if you're, if you're really genuine about changing, then you need to change your habits. And you don't have to change them all at once. One small habit, one tiny habit. How many of you are willing to change one today? One small habit. Anybody raise your hand, give me a heart, some thumbs up. If you're willing to change one small habit, you're gonna notice something shift. So awesome. Kavita, Deborah, Cheryl's willing. Dana's willing. Who else is willing? Jean's willing. Neen is willing. Dolores is willing. Awesome. Great. Beautiful. Mary's willing. Paul is willing. <laughs> Lori is willing. Good. Everybody, are you willing? That's the only question to ask. Am I 100% willing to do what it takes? See, if you're a wise mentor that I had years ago said to me, if you're willing to go to any lengths, you probably won't have to. So I'm going to leave you tonight with this, with a lot of love and a question. 
Are you willing to go to any lengths? If you're willing to go to any lengths, you probably won't have to either. And if I can help you, please reach out. I'm here for you. And I want to thank you again for being here on the call. We'll send the recording out again tomorrow. And I recommend listening again because you will now be able to hear things you couldn't hear today because you've expanded your consciousness by being here. You'll be ready to hear more tomorrow that you weren't capable of hearing today. So don't stop. Keep taking the next step. And remember, everything is designed to follow the natural blueprint. Doesn't mean there are no challenges in life. We do grow from, you know, challenges, but it doesn't mean suffering or being debilitated with pain, symptoms, habits of suffering. So my friends, thank you again. See you again soon, I hope, and much, much love to you. Bye, everybody. Let's unmute and say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.